guys, I'm doing a video on the top five cars that were long forgotten. Today, our first one is the Ford Excursion. Now, the Ford Excursion was only made for one generation from 1999 to 2005. It was premiered in 1999 for the 2000 model year. Anyways, it was like a longer Ford Expedition and much heavy duty like. It was based on the Ford uh, heavy duty heavy duty at the time and let's go down to read more info the pros of it was that it was a substantial passenger and cargo capacity impressive towing ability and it had a diesel engine option cons unwieldy size truck like uh, driving characteristics of course where it was a full size suv poor fuel economy and high sticker price well it it did use like a v12 engine or a v10 I'm pretty sure it used a V12, though. No, it used a V10. So, yeah, that's one reason why it used up a lot of power and fuel. Now, the years were 2000 through 2005. And, yeah, it only lasted for, like, one generation, which is not too good. Edmund's uh, expert review on the expedition. I mean, excursion. Forgive me, guys. Excursion. Unless you really need the excursion's towing ability and huge interior, you're better off with the smaller Expedition or GM Suburban slash Yukon XL Twins. 2005 Highlights Alloy wheels replace the chrome steel wheels on XLS models, and the front fascia appearance has been slightly revised. Now, brand new, the Ford Excursion cost right around 55 grand, maybe more at the time. Brand new, but... Let's go on to our next one, shall we? And now we move on to the Plymouth Prowler. Later, the Chrysler Prowler is a retro-styled production car manufactured and marketed from 1997 to 2002 by Daimler Chrysler, based on the 1993 concept car of the same name, Plymouth Prowler. Manufacturer Chrysler Corporation of 1997, Daimler Chrysler of 1999 to 2002, also called the Chrysler Prowler from 2001 to 2002 because Plymouth was discontinued in 2001. Now, Plymouth was made from 1926 to 2001 by Chrysler. Plymouth was. And uh, Chrysler was discovered in 1924-1925. So, let's continue. Production 1997 to 2002 of the Plymouth slash Chrysler Prowler. Now, as you can see, it looks similar to a Chrysler PT Cruiser, yet more rugged and more of what we call a rat rod today. So, let's go on. The assembly was the Shady Side, Ohio of the United States and Detroit, Michigan of the United States. The class, it was a sports car, body style, two-door roadster, layout. Um, it was a FR layout platform, a Chrysler uh, PR lay platform. Engine 3.5 liter EGG V6 transmission 4 speed uh, 42 LE automatic wheelbase 113.3 inches length width height curb weight was 2800 pounds which was very light for a vehicle of that size. <clears throat> now here are some photos. Very nice, very nice. Now as I said, it looks like a very rugged and rat rodish Chrysler PT Cruiser. The Prowler was offered in a single generation and a front engine rear drive uh, rear transmission configuration with an overall production of 11,702. I've never seen one before. Not in person, anyways. The Plymouth Prowler was produced for the 1997 and 1999 to 2000 model years. After the Plymouth brand was discontinued in 2001, the, Plymouth, the Prowler was sold as a Chrysler Prowler. Uh, for the 2001 and 2002 model years. However, Daimler Chrysler marketed uh, the Prowler as a Plymouth in Canada for the 2000 model year. The Prowler was the last Plymouth sold in Canada. Model year production uh, figures 1997, 457, 1999, 3,921, 2000, 2,746, 
The last Prowler was built on February 15, 2002, and the model niche was later filled by the Chrysler Crossfire in 2004, which was just like a convertible of some sort. Now, here we end this one. Let's go on to our next one. And now here's our next one. The Mercury Cougar is a nameplate applied to a diverse series of automobiles sold by the Mercury division of Ford from 1967 to 1997 and from 1999 to 2002. While the nameplate is most commonly associated with two-door coupes, at various times during its production, the Cougar was also marketed as a convertible, four-door sedan, station wagon, and hatchback. Right here is a display of the 1997 Mercury Cougar XR7. Manufacturer Mercury, Ford. Model years 1967 to 1997 and through 1999 to 2002. Class Pony Car, 1967 to 1973. Personal Luxury Car, 1974 to 1997. Mid-sized cars, 1977 to 1979, 1981 to 1982. Sport Compact, 1999-2002. Front Engine Rear Wheel Drive, 1967-1998. A Transverse Front Engine Front Wheel Drive, 1999-2002. With 2,972,784 examples produced. The Cougar is the highest selling vehicle ever produced by the Mercury brand. Its 34-year production is second only to the Grand Marquis. And the Mercury model line uh, produced for 36 years. During the 1970s and 1980s, the Cougar was closely tied uh, to the marketing of the Mercury division. Mercury advertised its uh, dealer as the sign of the cat. With big cats atop Lincoln Mercury dealer signs. In line with the Cougars, several animal-related nameplates were adopted by the division, including the Bobcat, Lynx, and Sable. During its production, the Cougar was assembled at the Dearborn Assembly Plant, part of the Ford River uh, Rouge Complex, in Dearborn, Michigan from 1967 to 1973, San Jose Assembly, uh, Milpitas, uh, California from 1968 into early 1969, Lorraine Assembly, Lorraine, Ohio from 1974 to 1997, and at Flat Rock Assembly, Flat Rock, uh, Michigan from 1999 to 2002. First generation looked... Almost similar to a Ford Mustang at the time, which the Ford Mustang was first supposed to be known as the Ford Cougar in 1964, but they got rid of that name and just named it the Ford Mustang. And then they left it up to Mercury to name the Mercury Cougar in 67. Now, the body style was a two-door hardtop and a two-door convertible related to the Ford Mustang. Engine 289 cubic inch 4.7 liter Windsor V8. 390 cubic inch 6.4 liter FE V8. Now there were plenty of engine options at that time. Plenty. The introduction of the Cougar finally gave Mercury its own uh, pony car. Slotted between the Ford Mustang and the Ford Third. The Cougar was the performance icon and eventually the icon for the Mercury name for several decades. The Cougar was available in two models, Base and XR7. It only came in one body style, a two-door hardtop. No center or B-pillar. Engine uh, choices uh, ranged uh, from the 200 horsepower, 149 uh, kilowatt, 289 cubic inch, 4.7 liter, two-barrel V8, to the 335 horsepower, 250 kilowatt, 390 cubic inch, 6.4 liter, four-barrel V8. Performance package called the GT was available on both the base and XR7 Cougars. This included the 390 cubic inch 6.4 liter V8, as well as a performance handling package and other performance enhancements. Now let's go on to our next one, shall we? Our next one is the uh, Toyota 2000 GT. It is a limited production front engine rear wheel drive two seat hardtop coupe Grand Tourer designed by Toyota in collaboration with Yamaha. First displayed to the public at the Tokyo Motor Show in 1965, the 2000 GT was manufactured under contract by Yamaha between 1967 and 1970. In Japan, it was exclusive to Toyota's Japanese retail sales uh, channel called Toyota Store. Toyota 2000 GT MF10. Very sharp looking. 
manufacturer Toyota Motor Corporation and Yamaha Motor Corporation joint project. Production 1967 to 1970, 351 were produced, so that is a very, very rare Toyota. The designer was Jiro Kawana, and Satoru Mizaski was the industrial designer, and Jiro was product manager. Class, sports car, body style, two-door, fastback, layout front, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, engine 2-liter, uh, 3M, inline 6, 2.3 liter L2M inline six petrol. Power output 150 horsepower from a two liter and 109 to 115 horsepower from a 2.3 liter. Transmissions available were a five speed manual and a three speed automatic. Now the curb weight 2469 pounds, but for you other people out there, 1120 kilograms. Predecessor Toyota Sports 800, successor Toyota Celica, Toyota 86, and Toyota Supra, which are now one of the best lately. The successors. The 2000 GT revolutionized the automotive world's view of Japan, then viewed as a producer of imitative and stodgily practical vehicles. As a sleek, high-performance fastback, it demonstrated its automakers could produce a sports car to revile to rival the better marks of Europe. Reviewing a pre-production 2000 GT in 1967, Road and Track magazine summed up the car as one of the most exciting and enjoyable cars we've driven, and compared it favorably to the Porsche 911. Today, the 2000 GT is seen as the first seriously collectible Japanese car and its first supercar. Examples of the 2000 GT have sold at auction for as much as in US dollars $1,200,000. Let's go on to our next one, shall we? And now, the Bugatti EB110. It is a mid engine sports car produced by Bugatti Automobili SPA from 1991 to 1995. The company was liquidated. It was the only production model made by. Romano Artioli's Italian incarnation of Bugatti. Now, it looks very sharp overall. Looks like any Italian vehicle, except it is a French manufacturer. Bugatti EB110 Super Sport is what we're looking at here. Manufacturer Bugatti Automobili SPA, production 1991 to 1995. Only 139 were produced. Assembly plant was Italy, Modena, Capa. Capogalliano, or something like that. The designer was uh, Marcello Gardini or Gandini. The prototype, there were many prototypes of the vehicle. The class sports car, S. Body style, two door coupe. Layout, rear, mid engine, all wheel drive, which to me is very unheard of in my opinion. They were scissor doors. Now, that was a very cool thing back in those days, and it is now. Related to the B Engineering Adonis Bugatti EB112. Engine 3.5 liter quad turbocharged V12. That was before they moved on to the W16 engine. Power output the GT put out 553 horsepower, while the Super Sport put out 603 horsepower. And the transmission is a six speed manual. Now the wheelbase is 100.4 inches. Length 173.2 inches, width 76.4 inches, height mm, 43.9 to 44.3 inches, curb weight 3,571 pounds and 3,126 pounds for the Super Sport. The successor is the Bugatti Veyron. Now, this is the final one, guys. And have a great day.